If you're considering getting the Beaver Builder Power Pack, this will be a quick overview of what you can expect to receive uh, so you can make an educated decision on whether it's worth your while or not. So first what we're talking about is this particular set, the Power Pack Beaver add-ons. On the website, you can go through the modules, the sections, and the templates and kind of see what they offer. When you get to the back end of WordPress, uh, a lot of it will be integrated with your Beaver Builder settings, but there are some separate settings just for the Beaver Builder Power Pack. So first, let's take a look at what you get within the Beaver Builder Editor. We're going to go to a page and edit. For example, let's go to the About page. Click on the Beaver Builder link. Here you'll see your standard Beaver Builder Editor with a header, some content, more content, so on and so forth. When we open up the editing tools, under the modules, the rows, and the templates, we always have the drop down. And this drop down, you'll notice one called Power Pack Modules. Clicking on that will display all the modules available through the Power Pack. So you'll notice you have 3D slider, advanced menu, animated headlines, column separator, and so on. So these are all the new additional tools you can have. Uh, one thing that I find helpful is that when you're looking for something to use, it can be a bit overwhelming. So I use the Power Pack site uh, as a guide as to what I might want. So for example, if you click on the modules section, perhaps I'm looking for a stylized button. So I'll type a button in their search box and you'll see button and dual button comes up. So you can click on either of those and see the examples they display on the site to kind of give you an idea of what this module is going to create. And then on our page, we could even do a search here for dual button. I could bring that in and then go through the options and save that module. The power pack is also going to add a lot of templating to your website as well. If we go under settings and the power pack setting, you'll see some tabs, particularly you'll see them for templates and extensions. The extensions real quick are just things that it'll, it'll add on to each of the rows. So the row extensions, you can have new separators, gradients, overlay types, and you also have some column extensions, which are also separators, gradients, and so on and so forth. The templates are actually really nice. It does not load them initially, uh, but if there's something you like, you can load it in. So you're not bloating your backend with a bunch of information and templating and images that you're not going to use. So it even lets you filter them down. Let's say we're looking for an about page. If we click on about, it'll filter down to the about pages. And if you see something you like, you can activate it and it will download those assets and that template into your WordPress setting. So you can use it later. Additionally, if you go into the Beaver Builder settings, in the same way that you can select which modules you want to display through Beaver Builder, you can select which modules of Power Pack you want to display as well. So if there's ones you know you're never going to use, you can weed them out initially. So once you scroll down a bit, you'll see the creative modules for Power Pack. You'll see the content modules for Power Pack. And if there's one you're not using or you're never going to use, you can just uncheck them and they will no longer appear in your tools settings. So that's a quick overview of what Power Pack will add to your site. Uh, personally, I find these pretty useful, especially if you look at a cost versus time situation. So if it's saving you in development time, it could be worth the cost of the add-on. But it does add a lot to Beaver Builder as well, so if that becomes overwhelming, that can be a hindrance as well. So be sure to consider the pros and cons and make an informed decision.